right underneath these red cedar trees, I have a red cedar board to look at. This piece was part of some siding, it still has some grey paint on it. Nevertheless, this side was ran through the thickness planer and this side was planed as well as sanded. The final pass was 600 grit on the uh, face of the board there and the end grain was sanded down to 2000 grit. So we'll look at it a little bit. Cedar has this brown color. It's pretty featureless. There's really not a lot to look at. But uh, within this board you can see lighter brown patches and darker brown patches as well. And the darker brown at the knot comes out on the other side and all of a sudden it, this whole part of the board is dark. That's its natural color. It's, it's not wet here. Here we have a little bit of swirly grain, but it's not really the grain that's swirly, but sometimes the fiber just gets raised like so. Rough cut cedar has this feature in it that the fibers just stick up on some patches on, on, on this board, but on rough cut cedar it's just uniformly everywhere. The grain is pretty tight on, on uh, cedar especially edge grain like this and they're going from the lighter patch transitioning to the somewhat darker and maybe one more, one more pass getting a little closer with this lens there so it's like I said it's pretty featureless all you can see is the growth rings forming these lines running the length of the board the same lines can be found at the end grain here and you can also see the other than the few sending scratches or, or just scratches that run this way you can also see the rays running somewhat perpendicular to the growth rings That's about as close as I can get with the camera. Well, actually, let's put this lens in front of it. See if those rays come out a little better. Yeah, definitely there. Extremely, extremely faint lines, okay? And this only comes out with uh, when it's sanded down to one or two thousand grit. All right, so uh, if you just cross cut one piece, you're not gonna see those rays on it. Okay, I guess the next one is microscopic shots on this board. I found some beautiful red cedar wall paneling here, where we can look at some of the botanical features, as well as color variations of the wood. All of this red cedar here is edge grain, or quarter sawn, so none of this has face grain. For architectural looks and finish, all the grain is running uniformly, vertically. I got different shots taken on face green at the mill. There's also no knotty boards here. It's not that cedar doesn't have knots, it does. It does have knots because it does have branches, but the knotty is sorted out from the clear at the mill. You can see here where the, those green variations, that's where the green waves around knots, whether those are pin knots that will be forming or, or huge ones. We've got all kinds of knotty footage taken at the mill, so there, so uh, this green variation is due to some proximity to knots. As you can see, red cedar color changes quite a bit from this board is orangey, uh, those ones are just streaky, those have purplish wash, that has a lot of purplish wash in them. Some of the streaky parts are cream colored. I saw some nice cream color here. Here's a cream color sliver right next to this purplish uh, board or purplish part of the same board. The streaky or the cream colored slivers are not necessarily sapwood. I have some different shots taken on a stump where you can see sapwood all, all around the stump and you can see that sometimes it's creamy and this far away from the creamy it could be darker than the heartwood so so the streaks that you see in the in the wood 
this would be the, the tree would be go growing up this way and the roots would be down there so its color variations go across the trunk as well as up and down the trunk you can see some of these color variations say on this board here how about the fourth one out from the corner the vertically color variations you can see darker and lighter patches alternating just like so not necessarily because of proximity to knots but uh, but uh, sometimes they just change color uh, depending on the amount and quantity and quality of mineral deposits inside the wood so that's how red cedar looks like again this streakiness is not indicating sap wood or this this light color sliver there not indicate doesn't indicate presence of sap wood that's exactly just how red cedar grows and uh, these are its color variations let's go to the mill I'll show you some face grain and I'll show you some shots on knotty cedar as well this red cedar tree was cut down last week and we can look at the growth rings the sapwood and the heartwood this narrow band that goes around would be the sapwood and then red cedar it is not uh, continuous in terms of color and uh, or, or seems disconnected so here the sapwood is darker than the heartwood then the sapwood is lighter than the heartwood there it's darker there when it transitions to lighter patches of lighter sapwood some patches again transitions to darker so this darker orange now is uh, is the sapwood and the heartwood now is lighter here is a close-up on the sapwood you can see the bark that's where the sapwood starts and goes involves one two three four five growth rings or annular rings and the rest of it here is the sapwood and let me just do a close-up this way it's of course chainsaw finished so it's not super nice but pretty telling there. so that's how sap would looks like or could look like on a red cedar stump so consequently that's what you can find on lumber as well inconsistency and color variations and streaks and here at the sawmill of course we have all kinds this one is a stack of clear-cut red cedar and of course we have all kinds of color variations on it sapwood and hardwood of all colors this one is somewhat purplish this one is darker brown this one is very nearly black and when it's rough cut it cuts comes out from the sawmill as is different sections of it have different raised grain so this one is just smoother as is right after the cut all of this is face grain and here is a stack of knotty not only along the edge but also along the face there's all kinds of knots that the uh, people over there sort out and grade so this is how face grain looks like same color variations Here is some more footage of red cedar face green from this angle, rough cut of course. From this angle it doesn't seem to have a very tight grain. And there are some of the knots are on the surface. And again we have all kinds of colors everything from pinkish to very dark almost black and of course the knotty cedar boards aren't wasted fence panels and wall panels for sheds are made out of them and uh, here you can see some of this knotty wood of course we have the same scenario 
slivers of sapwood, heartwood, in this one we have knots. This is now face grain. That's a little bit of edge grain on, on this width, the rest of it is face grain, mostly face grain. We have the same color variations, look at this. Uh, very deep dark olive green, somewhat pinkish to very nearly almost white. And of course, I forgot to mention, especially around the mill where red cedar is cut fresh and you can feel the cedar's uh, aroma or smell and uh, it's, it could be, it, it could be uh, causing allergies or it could be described as wonderful depending on your uh, health but it is very distinct in any case. Fresh cut cedar, red cedar has an extremely strong, very distinct, I think nice odor. One rare feature of red cedar can be seen in the corner here uh, around that streaky transition. We hit a pitch pocket here and we have some pitch oozing out to the surface. It's a rare feature because red cedar doesn't have resin canals but it does have resin circulating in it but not but usually not in big lumps and in big amounts like this usually it's microscopic amounts evenly distributed and dispersed everywhere so it's a rare feature that we have so much in one spot but it but yeah so red cedar does have uh, resin in it